The Boston Bruins won. Bruins won in three, three to one against the against the Dallas Stars in 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 the first game of the of their NHL season. Welcome back to Into the Den. And I am Jay Freeman, your host. And and I gotta say, it was so fun to have uh, hockey back and like like i i knew pretty much from the moment todd angeli was uh, was singing the national anthem um that uh that this was that uh, that like damn we're we're really back but also this game was kind of a weird game not only was it uh, like one of the uh, one of the first first games we've had in a while of uh, of a uh, not only was it one of the first games we've had in a while of uh, Taylor Hall versus Tyler Sagan, so we uh, so we had the whole Taylor versus Tyler uh, dynamic again, which I'll get into it in a little bit. Uh, but also well, the Bruins lines in this sorry the Bruins lines in this game were. A little bit strained. We're a little bit uh, weird. Like the roster decisions in this game um, were uh, were ones that I was a little bit confused by. But uh, as the game went on, I uh, didn't exactly uh, I didn't exactly uh, care too much much about it. But uh, uh, but uh, I mean, Jeremy Swayman became the first. Uh, rookie goalie for the uh, Bruins to start uh, to start opening night since since I think 1972 I want to say uh, but uh, I mean I love Jeremy Swayman and I uh, and absolutely I think he should be the number one goalie in uh, in the uh, uh for the Bruins and it's like Linus Allmark who Linus Allmark who but also, but also some of the, sorry, some of the lines and defensive pairings I thought were a little bit weird. The, uh, uh, specifically Derek Forbert on the first, uh, on the first pair. Now, I may have been a little bit too harsh on Derek Forbert. I think that he's, he's a fantastic I think that he's a he's a pretty damn good uh, defenseman. The and the problem is that uh, like he was he was a good defenseman in Winnipeg until he got into that fight, and then is just and then he and then he imitated the team and then he imitated the entire team after uh, after Mark Shifley accidentally uh, accidentally fucked up Jake Evan. And and he just did, and he just, just fucking gave up the entire the rest of the way. But uh, but you had and him on the first line, and Gr- and Matt Griswick relegated to the into the third pairing with Connor Clifton. It's it's whatever. So we get to puck drop, uh, and uh, and I must also say it was. It was fun to have uh, Jack Edwards back in the boot. Uh, now I know everybody hates Jack Edwards because he is such a Bruins homer, but uh, honestly, it's it's kind of like having a. Uh, it is kind of like having a fan. Uh, it is kind of like having a fan uh, be back and uh, be in the uh, in the broadcast boot uh, like. It's like sure you hate it when it's it's a you hate it when and they're broadcasting a thing for the team against you. But oh my god, you're you love it when they broadcast for you. Uh, but uh, not my neither of the teams could really get 
much going, but the Bruins, but honestly, at least not in terms of getting anything in the back of the net. The uh, the Bruins' offense for the first for the first first period was fan was incredible. Well, twenty twenty shots in a single period, and this is even and what makes it even more impressive is that this was against Miro Haskin and 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 trying to and and I can tell you now. Trying to play aggressive offense against Miro Haskinen is like trying to drive a Chevy Camaro through purgatory chasms. It's like, <laughs> and but uh, the uh, Dallas is Dallas has Dallas had a Fantastic defense for this and uh, for this uh, for this game. Um, um, at, least, at least it seemed like uh, Merrill Haskinen seems to be uh, the Charlie McAvoy of this uh, of the Dallas Stars, and in that he's the only uh, he's is uh, like the uh, easily the most viable. Uh, option on that defense and then after him there's like maybe one other player and then there's a complete drop off in quality of you know, play and we'll get to we'll get to McAvoy in a little bit but but we also have honestly a kind of sloppy game in terms of uh, penalties. I don't think I've seen. I don't. I can't really think of as many mm, four on fours I've seen in a, in a game as this. I think there were like three or four of them um, all game. We had, we had one that was caused by a combination of of Ryan Suter getting called for hooking and and Craig Smith uh, getting called for tripping. And, and and it was during that that I realized, holy crap, that. And the Bruins penalty kill is actually still is actually still fantastic. They like not only could not only did the Bruins fail to give up a single power play, fail to give up a single power play goal all game, and that further solidified the fact that they were like one of the best penalty kill groups all season last year. But it actually felt like Connor Clifton and Brandon Carlo were actually a, were back to their normal selves. Like, like sure, they weren't going to be the like sure they weren't going to be the next fucking Victor Hedman or or like Kale McCarr. <coughs> Sorry, but they were, but for what they were, they were doing they were a lot better than they were last year, which which I can. Which I very much love, and as a and it was thanks to them and the efforts of what seemed to be a further a more defensive offense defensive core that Dallas couldn't get a single shot on goal until the last five minutes of the first period, but. Also, in those last five minutes, was is an interesting call that is going to piss off Dallas fans. And whenever it gets brings up, whenever it gets it's brought up for like the next next week and a half or so until uh, until the rest of the season and goes on, they eventually forget about it. That would be the Brad Marchand and and penalty shot goal. Well, now if this didn't happen, the Bruins still would have won. Uh, now, if this didn't happen, it's hard to say as to whether or not the Bruins would have even and won this game because uh, because with a later goal, it would have been it would have ended up being one one, and 
and who knows if if Holtby would have been pulled 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 if it was a tie game. But but Miro Haskinen and pops it up, and Brad Marchand Brad Marchand takes it, and he's just barely on sides. It's enough, and and he has full possession of it. He's just barely on sides, and and he makes a breakaway for the for the goal, which he can't get off in time because because of Miro Haskinen, because of Haskinen pushing him from behind. Now you can't really do that because it denies is the is then an opportunity enough to uh, to shoot uh, to probably shoot on goal and and so that results in a power play uh, in a penalty shot uh, and that's how we got the first goal of the game and the third time in NHL history uh, after uh, after Chris Kelly and uh, and Matt Sundin in uh, that a uh, that a penalty uh, shot was the first goal of a uh, season for a team but after that goal came a pretty gruesome injury. There was a little bit of a scrum um, happening at happening at uh, Braden Holtby's his crease, and Rupe hints and falls to the ground um, for the stars, and he gets kicked in the face. He spit he, he spits out his mouth guard and a lot of blood. He get uh, and so he gets taken back to the. And so I was like, "Oh shit, we're going back to the, we're going to the, uh, freaking, uh, to the locker room with you." And it was honestly uh, a surprise that he even came back. I can't tell if that's uh, it's because he was a tough son of a bitch or, uh, or if he is, uh, is crazy. But, uh, but, uh, I mean, throughout the. Throughout the game, um, going back, coming back to Charlie McAvoy because uh, uh, it felt like McAvoy was doing way too much uh, to justify uh, that nine point five million dollar a year contract that he, he just got uh, extended to for eight years. Is he? Is he? Uh, he had a puck holding. And call on him and a and a hooking call on him um and sure a two uh, and sure two penalties in one in game it's not uh, it's not good you don't want your you don't want your star defenseman taking penalties yes but also uh, but also he's the only uh, viable defenseman so he has to you know, like overwork himself that's the problem He's the only viable. Def- he's the best viable defenseman we have. So we overwork him, and then he, he plays sloppily and does shit like and does shit like that. But of uh, but regardless, we get to the one goal Dallas had all game. Um, um, the um, the uh, the stars are playing in a pretty uh, a press heavy offense, and that keeps the that keeps the puck in uh, in the Bruins in Bruins territory, and uh, Bruins can't clear it properly, uh, uh, and and Glenn Denning gets a. And it's a solid shot right on uh, right on net and uh, one one uh, uh, tie game at one and it was uh, no one no one wants to see a defensive breakdown and that was for all intents and that was uh, for all intents purposes a defensive breakdown um, and, but uh, if, uh but it also just felt like mm, the entire game mm, after the first period, it felt like the Bruins were kind of gassed and it felt like 
It felt like wow. They, well, it felt like oh, and and it felt like does this can this team even play a full sixty minutes? Which I think is ultimately going to be the the theme of this season: playing sixty minutes, playing the entire play the entire length of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. The, the game doesn't... I mean, this team... Taught, this team of all teams taught us anything. Taught us uh, that uh, no lead is ever a safe uh, form. It can, uh, even if you're up uh, three goals in the... Uh, even if you're up three goals in the first... Uh, even if you're up three goals in uh, in the last ten minutes of the uh, of the first uh, of game seven, and no lead is ever a safe one. And, but so, well, if they don't want to be uh, to be embarrassed, uh, they need to start being able to play a full sixty minute a full sixty minute game. Him. Him. But on to the third, third period, and in which Jake DeBrusk uh, in the first, Jake DeBrusk uh, tomorrow, well, or at least today, because is this is being recorded, and, and at like twelve in the morning, and, and at like twelve in the morning, and, but and, but I guess today. Is his his twenty fifth birthday, and he decided to and celebrate by taking a a little bit of a tap from um, Nick Foligno, oh, oh, off of a uh, off of a nice pass from McAvoy, eh, and slamming him in the back of the net, eh, and already eh, Jake DeBrusque has, eh, has a fifth of the amount of goals that he had had eh, all of last season. Eh, I. In. In. And uh, and so yeah, it felt. Uh, uh, I always liked Jake DeBrusque, uh, but after last season, I was like, okay, let's see. Uh, all right, let's see what we can get for. Uh, what value we can get for him, and I still don't know if, uh, and I don't know if I really want to. Continue looking for a trade suit for him, but I mean, it's not my decision to make. That's that's fucking I mean, Tweedledee and Tweedledum up there uh, making the decisions. And, but last, uh, but last few minutes, uh, it's Dallas pulls uh, Dallas pulls uh, Brayden Holtby, uh, and and of course, since it's the Bruins, they uh, they got a score on. And the empty net, and it ends, and it ends up being Brad Marchand, and coming in with his second goal of the game, and 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 ended up, and after the uh, during the breakaway that resulted in the goal, uh, Meryl Haskinen, and I found out really does not like Brad Marchand because, uh, because he pulls another. Really questionable little move with uh, uh with uh, with pulling his uh, stick up and uh, and just ripping it away and uh, 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 in sort of this uh, this weird uh, fusion of slashing, hooking, and tripping all at once and and of course he had Jack Edwards uh, it's going. Uh, going like uh, the NHL, oh, oh, I'll probably shrug it off. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, something something, in bro, something something go Bruins. And, but uh, for all intents, but for all intents and purposes, this was a decent. This was a decent night. Uh, this was a decent outing for the Bruins. I wouldn't say. Uh, that it 
uh, that it entirely sets the tone for the uh, next uh, for the next 81 games of the season. But I think that it, uh, but uh, there's definitely some things in this game that uh, that are key takeaways, is, such as is defense needs to start pulling its weight. Defense absolutely needs to start pulling its its weight. Of uh, another uh, another big criticism is is the complete disappearance of the fourth line. I mean, like I did not hear. Uh, I did not hear. Uh, freaking. Uh, I only heard Tom, Tomas Nosek and uh, and Trent Frederick's name. Um, like once or twice in the in the entire uh, uh, in the entire game. Um, actually, I heard Noshek's name um, a little bit more. I I barely heard uh, Trent Frederick's name. Um, I want to know what happened to the fourth line. To the fourth line, especially because uh, this team looked uh, so so gassed in the second in the second period in the first half of the third period and that it that it, we should have been utilizing them because is not only do we have them that's sort of the point he put a put a group of three out there that is going to that is going to apply offensive pressure pressure and give you some and give you some and give your top up six, some reprieve. That's the entire point of a bottom six. Thanks. It's not a bottom three. It is a bottom six. Thanks. But uh, I don't. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say this is an ugly win. I'd say it's a. Uh, I'd say it's. Uh, I wouldn't say it's an ugly win. Nor is it one that really. Uh, uh, it asks more questions than it answers, but but I'd say it's one it's one that that like you mark down as like a uh, uh, revisit revisit this game if if like you need uh, revisit. Uh, this game, if you need any sort of confirmation that no one is perfect. So anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for for watching. Quick like, quick like, quick subscribe if you want. And and let's just and and make sure to always remember that Charlie McAvoy needs some goddamn help up and that and that first pairing.